This is Dwight Judy, and I want to invite you into this pilgrimage into the 13th century. Well, we will learn from Bonaventure out of his very significant work, The Soul's Journey into God. We will be looking particularly at his introduction to meditating on God in creation through our senses. Bonaventure lived from 1221 to 1274. He is a second-generation Franciscan. While he was professor at the University of Paris, he was elected Minister General of the Franciscans, that is, the Order of Friars Minor. He also served as Cardinal Bishop of Albano, Italy. Among his many works are two versions of the life of St. Francis and that that we are going to explore today, The Soul's Journey into God. The prologue of The Soul's Journey into God begins with these words, I call upon the Eternal Father, through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, the Mother of the same God and Lord Jesus Christ, and through the intercession of Blessed Francis, our Leader and Father, He may enlighten the eyes of our soul to guide our feet in the way of that peace which surpasses all understanding. This is the peace proclaimed and given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ and preached again and again by our Father Francis. At the beginning and end of every sermon, he announced peace. In every greeting, he wished for peace. In every contemplation, he sighed for ecstatic peace. As we approach our contemplation, we do so in that spirit of peace that opening that is like reverie or rumination, sometimes called with soft eyes, we are approaching in reverence rather than in discursive thinking, analysis, seeking the peace that passes understanding. The soul's journey into God invites us to look for this peace that passes understanding in our contemplation over many distinct attributes of the creation, the universe, and human nature. I am indebted to two additional sources for this brief presentation in addition to Bonaventure's writings, and that is Thomas Cahill's uh, wonderful book, Mysteries of the Middle Ages and the Beginning of the Modern World, and Giotto's fresco paintings of the life of St. Francis and also of the Madonna and Child. Thomas Cahill speaks of the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries as a time in European Christianity when the spirit became more human in form. We might almost say humanistic in our day. Francis was attributed with creating the first creche or manger scene. And here in Giotto's painting, Francis himself is shown as placing the baby Jesus in the creche. Notice the animals right nearby. Giotto's painting here of Mary and the infant Jesus shows very real human figures and characteristics. This is a humanity now reaching out to God. The soul's journey into God invites us to look for God's footprints throughout creation. We are going to begin in the external world, in the sensory world, and then move deeper into the interior world of the human nature. So Bonaventure invites us to begin in our reverential observation of the ways of the universe, the ways of the natural world, then bringing our senses into the perception. How is it that we can sense these many things within the universe? Then we turn to our inner life and we look at the power of our own human nature for reason, for thinking, for observation, and the mystery that we are able to make ways of knowledge like mathematics 
And then we turn to that gift of Christian tradition, thinking of the redeeming power to make our human nature even more graceful, redeemed by the gifts of grace. Finally, we turn toward contemplating God in God's two essential characteristics, being and the good. The final stage is on spiritual and mystical ecstasy in which rest is given to our intellect, when through ecstasy our affection passes over entirely into God. At the end of the exercises, we are in that ecstatic peace which Bonaventure promised us at the beginning. This chart gives us a bit of an overview of the soul's journey into God. Chapters 1 and 2, looking outside of ourselves, the world of matter. Chapters 3 and 4, looking within ourselves, the characteristics of the mind. Chapters 5 and 6, looking beyond or above ourselves into the very nature of God. Bonaventure has been credited with this uh, marvelous understanding that we approach the world through the eye or the perception of the senses, the eye of reason or the interior capacities of the human mind, and the eye of contemplation, the capacity to observe God directly. It's said that the monk of the Middle Ages had two great books, the Book of Nature and the Book of the Bible. For this exercise in contemplative meditation, we want to turn to that book of nature. When we observe around ourselves the miracles of nature, what does it tell us about God? When we notice the power of our sensory perceptions, our hearing, our seeing, our kinesthetic awareness within our bodies, our tasting, our touching, what does that tell us about God? Bonaventure's answer is that in all creatures, that is, in all created things, you may see, hear, praise, love, and worship, glorify, and honor your God. Every creature is by its nature a kind of effigy and likeness of the eternal wisdom. From the creation of the world, the invisible attributes of God are seen. We're invited by Bonaventure to revel in the senses, when the inner senses are restored to see the highest beauty, to hear the highest harmony, to smell the highest fragrance, to taste the highest sweetness, to apprehend the highest delight. The soul is prepared for spiritual ecstasy through devotion, admiration, and exaltation. Our exercise is to be outside, take a walk in your neighborhood, perhaps in a nearby park, or a woods, or by a lakeshore, and shift into your senses. Cease your discursive thinking for a few moments and sense. What do you really feel? What do you really hear? What do you experience in your body? Listening for the perception of what does it tell you about the nature of God that we are reveling in our senses. And every now and then, perhaps in one of the most accessible ways we have, by journeying through our senses, we will be touched by the ineffable peace that surpasses understanding.